Alright, so welcome to sub-level 4 of the Bobot Kingdom. I believe this might be the first one that could be considered difficult. We've got a Violet Candy Pop, bud. Which is pretty good. Let's be very, very careful here. I get the feeling this floor is going to have falling rocks. Actually, something you could do is you can scout a floor with just your captain to look around for threats. Oh, we're going to have anode beetles. Okay, and a wallywog. I was worried about that. You see it spawned from the sky, or the ceiling, I guess. And there's the exit. Okay, so that's pretty good to note. I guess that's all there is with this floor. Though. It's right near the landing site, too. Okay, so maybe this floor isn't the one that I have in mind that's going to be pretty bad. Uh, oh! Oh, dang. Okay, we just want to get our yellows right now. Like, for real? Uh, yeah, we kind of just want to do that. Except for the Wallywog. Except for the Wallywog. So there's a gold version of the Iridescent Flint Beetle called the Iridescent Glint Beetle. If it has a treasure, I'm pretty sure it's never going to despawn, thankfully. But, yeah, I kind of want to be more on point now. Because, yeah, I'm kind of worried about that. Also got that Honey Wisp. I think it respawns. Not sure. Uh, oh! Yeah, it does. All right then, we're gonna want we're gonna want the nectar, but uh, let's go ahead and take care of the anode beetle just to get out of the way. Yeah, we might be converting five yellows to uh, purples because uh, we do want to have some reds by the end of the dungeon. At least twenty, I want to say. So there we go. Uh, throw a yellow pigment over here to take care of this yellow gate that's protecting another honey wisp. So that's a pretty good use of our time right there. Yes, we're going to have to systematically and methodically take out all of these electric-related enemies. Before we worry about, like, candy pop buds and whatnot. Although I think that might be the only one. For better or for worse. Uh, Alright, we want to go back and get... No, there's two. I definitely counted two. I don't think I'm seeing things, so... Alright, we're going we're gonna to have Louie actually do something kind of... Um, more headstrong than usual. Feels like we've been giving Louie all of the back rolls lately. So, let's have Olimar get the whites and the reds. I guess I may as well have him, like, propagate some purples. They might help out with the Wallywogs, and maybe they'll show up in a later floor or something. You know? But, we're down to 20 reds now, so I'm actually going to want to uh, leave our pigment over here and... Uh, Believe it or not, kind of want to use yellows for the other one, so... It's an equi it's an equivalent trade, more or less. Yeah, there we go. 25 yellows and 20 reds. I don't think we have any more to spare, unfortunately. So, I think I actually want to try and get that Wallywog first. Easier said than done with the beetles laying around, though. But, uh, there we go. Okay, the Wallywog is... Oh, and there's the freaking Glint Beetle, too. Maybe we can go for a double header here. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And I don't think that Anode Beetle has a companion nearby, so... Yep, yeah, there we go. It doesn't despawn because it has a treasure, like I implied. So that's pretty stinking good. And there we go. I think that's all of the enemies on this floor taken care of. So we will have Louie and the purple stand by the exit. Let's have Olimar reclaim 10 more purples. So we're going to have 30 purples total. That's pretty good. You know, if I had known that it was, if we're gonna, we were going to get that many purples, I probably would have brought in less, or less purples. I probably would have started with like 15 and brought more reds, since that's the highest of the three main colors right now. I say main colors because those are the colors that you can easily uh, make more of in the overworld. Purple and whites are kind of a side colors. And I don't want to say that in a bad way, because they are some of the most useful pigment you can ever find. But that's just how the, it's structured in the game. You know, I'm not trying to throw shade on anything or anything like that. It's just... The way the game does it, so, you know, just rolling with the punches. So it looks like we're going to have two treasures here. 
interesting looking one. So we have like a prism of some sort. I think it's a prism. The Crystal Cane, which just makes me think of the boss from Paper Mario. Which I did a Let's Play of, so you should probably check that out. Might be doing a Thousand Year Door Let's Play soon. I don't know. Can neither confirm nor deny. I don't even know how the scheduling... For all I know, there might already be a Thousand Year Door Long Play when this goes up. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We're just kind of rolling with the punches right now. An Unknown Merit. I guess it's a good name because I think that's an outdated currency, maybe? But I think that's a currency for, like, Japan or something. So I'm not even sure if it's outdated or if it's just, like, like the penny or something like that. Where it's not outdated, but it's lost a lot of its luster over the years. Uh, let's just say that in today's U.S. economy, you can't really buy much with coins. Like you could a century or so ago. Where the economy was so different that you could actually get a lot of value out of, like, a quarter. And, yeah, I'll just leave it at that and just not even say anything else, because that's going to be really off topic. Alright, so we're going to try and leave some uh, Pikmin here by the landing site, because I think this is going to be a floor that has rocks. Or it's going to have stuff falling from the sky, and when you have a situation like that, it's generally a good idea to have a captain go solo and scout everything out ahead of time. Because, yeah, look, you get bomb rocks, which do return from the original pigment, but purely as an obstacle, rather than something, yeah, and there's more bomb rocks over here. This is a good call. So, I, I, maybe it's, oh, God, oh, my God, I almost woke up that freaking orange, you know what, Louie, we have a lot of purples now. Take some purples, and get rid of the thing, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Alright, good. And there's nothing else by there, so we'll have Louie just extract that carcass and give me a little more peace of mind. Although, I guess we're done scouting. Uh, let's check the map. Uh, yeah, it's not a very large floor, is it? <laughs> well, alright. Uh, I believe all we gotta worry about now are some orange bulb orbs, so let's get our army situated here, and, uh, Purple Pigment at the helm, and whoop, believe it or not, though, I think the Dwarf Orange bulb, bulb Orbs, if that's what they're called, I don't think they uh, have heightened sense, but the, the Dwarf Bulb Bears definitely do. Those definitely notice you from a larger distance, but it's with the Orange, the Adult Orange Bulb Orbs, it's less that they notice you more in general, it's more that they are easier to wake up, is the way to look at it. It's not so much that they have much higher sensory, it's that they are a lot easier to wake up. They're probably not as nocturnal, I guess, even though they look more nocturnal than a regular red bulb orb, but I don't know. That's neither here nor there. I'm just commenting on things as I see it. Is this really the only treasure here, though? Because it's kind of weird to have all these floors with only one treasure. This looks like another Pilgrim Bulb, which we just got from the above ground of the Awakening Wood not too long ago. But I get the feeling that this is a different treasure. And it's also going to be worth about the same amount of Pocos. This is an anxious sprout. It's a sprout just waiting to grow. And yeah, that was the only treasure. You know, at least we didn't lose any pigments, so that's pretty good. So this floor, um, oh, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and say there's seven floors in the Bulblax Kingdom. This is the largest amount of floors thus far. Glutton's Kitchen was the previous best at six. This is going to be the floor to watch out for. So this one, I definitely want to take a Captain Solo. And we got a Crimson Candy Pop, bud. Uh, might not be a bad thing to use, actually, if you need to reconvert some purples or whites. So this is looking like an otherwise mostly fire-dominated floor right here. So, but, I mean, I just know that there's going to be like... What did I freaking tell you? There's going to be some stuff falling from the floor. Eggs are definitely better than bomb rocks. Like I said, <laughs> look at that. You don't know until you get there. I could have sworn there were some falling rocks, though. But maybe I'm thinking of another dungeon that's later in the game. Of course, there's also this side. Orange bulb board. That 
can be very dangerous. Another Crimson Candy Pop Bud. Uh, might be overcompensating a little bit at that point. Oh boy. My, my tights and bomb rocks! Oh my god! And the bomb rock reaches... No, but it kills the my tights. That might be a pretty good uh, spoil right there. Alright. Uh, did we explore every nook and cranny? Uh, again, it's not a very large floor. Another Violet Candy Pop Bud, though. That's kind of tempting, actually. But, hmm. I don't know if I we can do with uh, only 15 reds for the final floor. We only have 20 now. I'm kind of regretting a little bit, because now it would be pretty nice to actually have some for uh, some of these Fire Geysers. You can take care of Fire Geysers with um, Purple Pigment, of course, but... It's a little annoying because you have to wait on the timing and whatnot, so we're just kind of going to go old school a little bit here, killing off these uh, dwarf bulbars by throwing pigment on the back, just as usual. But there's no adult bulbars to worry about, and dweevils aren't really all that threatening on their own, so... And thankfully, when an enemy is in the middle of trying to eat a pigment, you can, if you kill them, you'll save the pigment. So it's pretty good to show that off. Dweevils are notorious for being able to, like, recollect enemy bodies, and when they do, they put them on their back, believe it or not, and they give them, like, an armor of sorts, where they can't really be killed. So, yeah. Alright, it looks like this side is, uh, pretty clear. So, hmm, I don't know if, uh, 20 red pigment are gonna be enough to get that fossil. So, I believe now I want to try and take the purples, and just the purples, try and take care of the orange bulb orbs over there. So, I guess while they're going to try and work on that, I also kind of want to take care of that dweevil, but... Uh, let sleeping dweevils lie? I guess? I mean, it might be better to leave it alone, rather. Um, actually, how many yellows do we have? We have 25 yellows, honestly. It might be weird, but I think I might want to take those into the purples, because we do need purple pigments, sadly. So, I will worry about that. And the fossil... Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I had to say that. Fossil! Dun, dun, dun. It does seem like there are quite a few fossils, or fossil-like treasures in the Bulbax Kingdom. As well as some jewels. I guess that's kind of the prevailing theme here. Uh, so, that's pretty neat. We are going to have Louie go, yes, over here. Uh, try to be wary of the geysers. Fire geysers. Oh. Dun-dun-dun! Yeah, I just had to do that. Now, this fossil is worth a good bit of Pocos, though. The Colossal Fossil. Looking at it, I can't exactly place what kind of an animal skull it is. Could be a saber-toothed tiger, could be some sort of prehistoric rodent or rat, for all we know. And that looks like another Crystal Clover situation. So that was like the first treasure we got here was the Crystal Clover, and then this is like the last treasure? Kind of makes things feel like they come full circle, almost. And this is just a nest bed of mitite corpses and nectar. None of which are nectar sprays, unfortunately. That would have been nice. That would have been very nice. So, we do still have that fire geyser. So, here's what I'm going to want to do. Uh, we are going to... No, I don't think we're going to... I think we're just going to let that Dweevil be alone, to be honest. So, let's grab all of these Pikmin. And, again, it's going to seem weird, but I think the yellows are the call here. I'm going to try not to do this too much in the future, though. Definitely... Go with whatever is the highest numbered ones, because those will be the most disposable. Even though you're not really losing pigment, you're just converting them to another color. Although I wouldn't be surprised if after after a point we will have more purples than either yellows or blues. Which would be kind of funny, I'm not going to lie. But, uh, yeah. So we can go ahead and use these pigment to clear out this room. Um, let's get the... No, 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 That's not what I meant to do, game. I think my D-pad might be glitching out. 
Let's throw some reds on the geyser. Ten of them will get it done at a quick enough pace. And let's get the purples that we just raised up. Try to get them flowered up. But that might be a little difficult. We've got all these carcasses in the way. Well, that certainly helps. Yep. So there we go. Thankfully, my type bodies... They're worth one Poco, and they only require one Pikmin to carry. But, considering the quantity with which they show up, uh, still a pretty good payout, I would say, for an enemy that technically can't kill Pikmin. So they are virtually no threat, unless there are other threats around them, because they scare the Pikmin, so and it's an indirect threat, rather than a direct threat, as it were. But as you can see, for the most part, the Bullblax Kingdom is tougher than, say, the Glutton's Kitchen or something like that. The Eternal Emerald Eye. It complements the Crystal Clover quite nicely. Uh, it's still not, like, that hard. I would say this is the first, like, medium difficulty dungeon in the game, truth be told. But anyways, we are done. Gotta make sure we're heading in the right direction. And we are ending with 20 red, 20 yellow, 35 purple. We're going to have 50 purples when we get out of here. So we're halfway to that goal of needing 100 purple pigmen. This thing is a monstrosity. So we're just going to leave it alone. We're going to leave that other corpse alone too. I like the attention to detail when the spider-like enemies die. They curl up because that's how spiders die in real life. I only know this because I've had to kill quite a few spiders in my life because they were threatening my life. Because they were poisonous spiders. Like, no joke. I'm pretty sure I killed a Black Widow one time. Alright, so this is the final floor. We've got some fire here. You know, this dungeon is called the Bull Black's Kingdom. Which does make me think of the Emperor of Bull Blacks from the original Pigment. That was a very nice and fitting final boss. You know, I have to admit that much. But, you know, for no particular reason, we are going to take purples, now that we've taken care of the fire threats, and... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No way! No freaking way, it's the... Oh. Um... Well, I was going to say that that was a nice callback to the final boss of the original Pikmin, but kind of just came and went, didn't it? My initial report indicates that the giant bull black spat out some sort of object. Beep, boop, boop, boop. It looks fascinating, but it's drenched in that creature's internal juices. Disgusting. Beep. Oh, don't roll your eyes at me. I'll store it for you. Beep, boop, boop, boop. So, um, we need to talk about this. First of all, this thing is nowhere near as huge as the Emperor Boblex from the original Pigman. So, here is my theory on this. The Emperor Boblex that we fight in Pigman 2 is like a regular Emperor Boblex. And the one we fought in the original Pigman was like an Alpha or something like that. Like an Alpha Emperor Boblex. And don't forget, there is an Empress Bulblax now. We know that now, since we fought one as the first real boss fight of Pikmin 2. So we know there's some sort of monarchy going on here, with the Bulborbs and the Bulblaxes and whatnot. Anyway, this is the Forged Courage. As you probably know, with the last object we collected giving us electricity immunity, this will give us fire immunity. This material has perplexing properties. I will try fusing it with this spare spacesuit. Processing complete success. Behold my latest invention, the Scorch Guard. Thanks to the heat resistant alloy, this suit is now impervious to fire. Beep, beep, boop, boop, boop. Thankfully, they don't waste too much time telling you more or less the same thing as the uh, dream material. And Emperor of Oblex is worth 15 Pocos. Yep. But like I said, I do hold on to the theory that what we fought in Pikmin 1 was like the Alpha. And I'm going to let you guys know this now. We're going to be fighting multiple Emperor Bulblacks in Pikmin 2. That's, that, that's the biggest one that you fight in Pikmin 2, I'm pretty sure. But it's not over yet. We're going to fight more of them. 
and you're able to toss pigment at them while they're jumping from the ground, it's not even just purple pigment. Even if you use red pigment, they can utterly wreck an Emperor Bulblax in Pikmin 2. Just by tossing a bunch of pigment on there and dealing damage before it can even shake them off. At any rate, now that we do have fire immunity, we are able to collect this treasure here, which, upon further inspection, kind of looks like the gyroids from Animal Crossing. And, well, we'll see what it's called. Anyway, this treasure only requires ten. Oh! I could have done five more red pigment after all. I could have been good with fifteen. I lost five yellows for no reason. Gosh darn it, I can't even reset because it saves on every floor. Ah, well, you live and you learn, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how it works. So, we will go ahead and leave our Pikmin here with Louie. Louie, Louie. Mm. Eat, gotta go. I think that's how the song goes. I don't know. And we're gonna have Olimar rest by the geyser. So now we have immunity to fire and electricity. Which is gonna be very good for future caves. And there's still one cave left to do in the Awakening Wood. And that's the hardest one in the Awakening Wood. It's going to be a doozy. And it's basically... I'm going to have to basically dedicate a whole episode to that. But thankfully, we are about to wrap up this episode because we are done with the Boblax Kingdom. When we get to the above ground, though, we are going to try and, like, put a dent. Try to open up a path to the next cave. Especially if we can get, um... You know, some more pigment numbers raised for the blues and the yellows at this point, because we, we've got plenty of reds. I'm not worried about the red pigment population ever. You know, we got plenty of those. Anyways, total amount of treasure in the Boldex Kingdom is 10. Which makes sense, because there was a lot of floors where there was just one treasure, but, you know. And we're 70% of the way done with the Dept. Which is pretty good to get... So much progress done from one cave. Alright. Now we are back above ground in the Awakening Wood. And, yep, yeah, 70% of the debt recovered. I think we skipped the 60% uh, notification, funnily enough. At any rate, we're not going to need too many purples for this next segment. Uh, 25 of those will be good enough. Believe it or not, we're, we're not going to need any reds for the next cave, so we're actually going to have, like, maybe only five or ten reds for the next cave, again, as kind of a uh, sacrificial kind of thing. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and put those pigment up, and we'll put, we'll put... Actually, we will put all of the reds up, because we're going to need more blues. I think we're going to do something like 30 yellows and 30 blues. Yeah, that's what we want to do. And... I'm trying to figure out which one is, like, slightly higher numbers. Then again, we're not going to the cave. I'm just going to spend the rest of the day uh, getting to the cave. Getting it unlocked, as it were. Because, yeah, we're not going to, like, have enough time. Matter of fact, I'm kind of tempted. But, nah, we'll, we'll keep going. We'll keep going. Because I really don't think there's going to be that much left to do. We're going to use this spot where the yellow Pikmin were in Pikmin 1 as a way to keep everyone grouped up. Alright, so Louie... Right, so change of plan. Uh, we are gonna kill the creeping chrysanthemum so that we can extract it for Pikmin seed because uh, we happen to be using Pikmin that could use some more Pikmin numbers. That's pretty handy. Um... Okay, we do want more blues. So one, two, three, four, five... And let's toss some white Pikmin in there. Now let's go ahead and split up our forces a bit here. So Olimar will stick over here, and Louie will be in charge of the blue Pikmin. It feels like his calling, almost. And I guess we'll have Olimar in charge of the whites and the purples. We're not going to need the yellows right now, I don't think. They're mostly only relevant for the dungeon itself, but we're bringing them along just in case. And furthermore, we will split up just the purples, because we do have yellow Wallywogs in the water. What I'm thinking is, I might try to pull them out with Louie and the blues, 
and then um, hopefully try to kill him off with purples on the ground because only 25 blue Pikmin. I don't think that's going to be enough to reliably kill. Uh oh. Okay, you know what? We do have plenty of the spray. We'll use up a spray. No big deal. Uh, some of our blues need nectar anyway, so win-win. Still got plenty of sprays. Uh, still another Wallywog to worry about, though. Mm. So see, that one I kind of feel like could we could get away with um, doing the trick. But we got to form this bridge first. We got to wait for that, unfortunately. So I guess we'll have Olimar go back to the landing site to reclaim the Pikmin that went over there to propagate the numbers. I don't know exactly how many seeds a Creeping Chrysanthemum yields. But looking at that, I think it's like 10 or 12, so that's pretty good. So, yeah. I, actually, we can get the last Overworld treasure. I think we have enough time to do that before we end off this episode. And then, um... Can pretty much uh, go from there. So, yeah. So what I want to do now. Oh! Bridge is done. Alright then. Uh, let's have Louie get all of the blues together, all 30 of them, and be over here. Or rather, over here. And now, we will have Olimar and the 20 purples. I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure. This Wallywog can be lured out. It might be a little uh, finicky, but it could still work. So, yeah, kind of already there. Come on, yellow Wallywog. Uh, that worked out fantastically, actually. Alright, so we're going to want to move back here. We might not be able to get the treasure, but at least we can get everything set up. Alright, so... Have Louie sit over there. We want white Pikmin because we want them to work on the poison bridge. The bridge that's flanked by poisonous gas. But it's actually more like when you start building the bridge, the generators will unveil themselves. So while they're doing that, we actually want Olimar and Louie and the Blues together. Because there's like this puzzle we're going to have to do. For the, um, for the treasure, as it were. We'll go ahead and have the... Oh my freaking god. Oh my freaking god. was pretty neat. I still think it resulted in a... Alright, so then in the change in plans, I decided to have the blue pigment carry back some of the yellow Wallywog carcasses, and not have activity going on while the whites are working on the bridge. That seemed to be a very bad idea. So anyways, let's leave our pigment over there, and then now we can try and do the puzzle for the treasure. So, let's get this block down first of all. Uh, hmm. The problem is, I don't know exactly how many we need, so we'll do like 10 pigment here. Two, three, four. And we want one captain here with the pigment. And then we want to do like, I think, 10 pigment at least on here. Something like that. I don't know if that'll work. Uh, won't, so we're gonna have to go back to the landing site and get the other blue Pikmin. I guess at this point we may as well just have uh, Pikmin laying around. I don't know if they're gonna be able to get the treasure, but we can at least try and get it off of its perch. It's kind of funny because the treasure is actually a a birdie. I don't know. If it's, I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's the thing that you use in tennis, basically. Wait, where are those three purple... Oh, maybe they helped out with the, um, the Wallywog, right? Yeah, basically had Blue Pikmin carry back a yellow Wallywog carcass, so that should come in handy, hopefully. And, yeah, let's get the blues. Let's try to get the treasure out of here. 
if possible. But I think it might require 15. Oh my god, it does require 15. Gosh darn it. But we have 20 blues here. I guess we only need to do a few more. So... Something like this. It's a little sloppy, but I guess it'll work. There we go. Yep. Okay, so they should be working on that, finally. As you can see in the distance, there is a bony wall we have to worry about. But that's... The cave is literally on the other side of that. And we're going to have literally all day to work on that. The next day. And next time on Let's Play... What are they doing? What are they freaking doing? They are taking a very risky road. But I think they might be alright somehow. As long as the count stays at 100 pigmen, you know they'll be alright. You know they're not dying. And the legendary rule of pigmen, if the camera doesn't focus on them, then that means they're not there. That is how it works, right? Also, double check the radar to make sure... Doesn't seem like we're missing any pigmen. Is there really 25 of them on the thing? Wow, really? Countdown is irrelevant, because even if it doesn't get there, it's so close, we can just get it the next day, so it's like, whatever. So, it's gonna make it, right? Quit taking these roundabout paths. There we go. But yeah, this treasure is a birdie, I think. It's the thing you use in tennis. You know, make them go back and forth. An air bird, or air birdie, or air break, as it's called in the treasure, but... Anyways, we are going to end with 64 blue pigment and 46 yellows. That's not bad. But yeah, we'll go ahead and end the day here and also end the episode. Although this was a pretty long episode, so this might have to be split up. I don't know yet. Yeah, I hope not, but you never know. But let's go ahead and skip the cutscene since we are kind of on a schedule here. And uh, just blitz to this report. Didn't lose any pigment and we got plenty of treasures. Yes, indeed. No Pikmin lost. Red Pikmin went down a little bit, but usually when that happens, it's... A oh, and the yellow Pikmin went down a surprising amount, too. Uh, darn? How'd they go down by 10? Oh, uh, there were a lot of Violet Candy Pop Buds in the uh, Bull Black's Kingdom. Now we have 40, 40 whites and 50 purples. We still need more purples. The blue Pikmin numbers are looking pretty good, though. And, yeah, still only two deaths. I'd say that's pretty good. Some wild animals are nesting under the bridge now. They think I'm their pal or something. My stylish suits are covered in hair. I'm pitiful. But at least they're warm. Alright, so next time on Let's Play Pigment 2, we return to the Awakening Wood for one last cave. Gosh darn it. And it's going to be a doozy. Eight floors of madness. At least I think it's eight floors. It might just be seven, but I don't know. I feel like it might be 8, but there's only one way to find out next time on Let's Play Pikmin 2. See you later, Space Explorers!